ever open a journal article to start reading it, stop. And make sure that you know the question you're trying to answer by reading that journal article. If you don't know me, I am Dr. Elena Reister. I have my PhD in chemistry, and on this channel, I make videos to help you become more efficient in research. And the number one way you can waste time in research is by reading tons of journal articles to get nothing out of it. If you don't have a question that you are trying to answer by reading a journal article, you're not likely to remember a lot that's going on in that journal article. Now, your questions can be super broad or super narrow. They can be things like, what is my field? What is going on in my field? Or they can be something specific as, how do I measure estrogen concentration? But before you even go looking for journal articles, you want to make sure you know what you're trying to get out of those journal articles because it's so easy to fall into the trap of feeling like you're productive because you're reading hundreds of journal articles and you're not actually gaining anything out of it. So first, detail out your question that you want to know and then pick the keywords from that and use something like Google Scholar or Research Rabbit, and I'll have tutorials to both of those linked in the description below, to then be able to search for specific articles that are likely to answer your question. So once you've found a journal article, it is time to start getting into it. And the second thing we want to do is make sure that this journal article is actually going to answer our questions. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the abstract of the journal article and we can read through it and what we're looking for is one, is it actually on the topic that we're interested in? For example, if I'm looking at this paper and I'm really interested in learning about DTIMS, which is a specific type of ion mobility, and I look at this paper and in the abstract they're talking all about TWIMS, okay, then that's telling me that this might not be the specific paper I want to read to answer my question. So what do I do from there? So what I'm gonna do is make sure that this is in a spot that is searchable for me. So in that case, for me, that is either my Notion organization template or Zotero. And I will also link videos below about how to use both of those. At a minimum, you do want to make sure the abstract is searchable, but if you want to go one step further, you can actually use an automated summarization tool like Paper Digest or Scholarcy to add in additional information into that to make it more searchable as well. Now, if, for example, in this paper, if I am actually interested in TWIMS, and maybe I'm thinking about how does TWIMS separate out steroid isomers, then looking at this abstract, I know that this is actually going to be relevant. They're showing that they actually separated out steroid isomers from this. So I just want to go through and make sure that this is going to be super relevant before I dive into the meat of the paper. So what I'm going to do is go all the way down to the conclusion section. And in the conclusion section, this should tell me their key findings if it doesn't tell me it in the abstract and their main impact of the paper. What I want to be doing here is not only thinking about is this related to the question that I have, but also thinking about what other research ideas can I develop from this. And so if you want more help with developing out those research ideas, download my 30 day research jumpstart guide that is going to be in a link in the description below. So from there, looking at this conclusion, this is still talking about steroid separation, so I know that I'm good to go on here. And you can feel free to highlight in these abstract and conclusions as well if you find something really interesting. The reason why I'm not going to teach you how to highlight or make notes on your PDFs is because honestly, I have, whenever I have done that, I've never gone back to them and actually looked at it. So I put all that time and energy into it, and honestly, in the future, I usually just search, find what I'm looking for, and then move on with whatever I'm doing. So putting all that time and energy into highlighting and notes doesn't work well for me, and you need to know you and whether that's actually an efficient use of your time. So now we get to jump into the meat of the research paper. We think that this is going to answer our questions. So the very first thing I always do whenever I am reading a research paper is I'm going to the results section first. And what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the figures from the results section. So I'm going to go through each figure, understand what it's trying to tell me, and then what I will do is if I don't understand something that it's trying to tell me, I will read that section of the results section to see what is it actually trying to show or is there something additional that I should have known from it. 
Now the reason I skipped the introduction and the method section is because the results is telling me what I actually want to know and my introduction and method section is going to be there more for reference. So whenever I'm looking at a results section, I'm like, oh, this is the graph that I want to create in my paper. How did they do that? I'm jumping back up to the method section and looking at, oh, they use this technique to do that. Or if I'm looking at the results section and I'm like, wait a second, I don't know what this word means or I don't understand this relationship here, I can jump back up to the introduction section to look at that background knowledge. Or if they're talking about a specific paper, I can always jump up to their introduction section to understand what was that paper about and then come back to the results section. I am using the introduction and the methods mainly as a reference section for me. Mainly what I'm doing is going through all of my figures, making sure I understand what they are trying to tell me, and then I can make my own notes that are also searchable within Zotero or my Notion Literature Organization template on these figures as well. Once I understand all of the results, I'm going to jump into the discussion and really understand how does this relate and try and answer my question even more if I haven't already answered it from the results. Oftentimes, if I've already answered my question from the results section, I won't read the discussion section. But if I want to get more information or if I find that this is a really, really intriguing paper, I will actually read the discussion section and understand what they're actually finding, why certain things happen, and how does this compare to the what's been published before. In my field specifically, a lot of times we have our results and discussion sections as a single section. So as I am reading the results, I can actually go ahead and see the whys to a lot of those conclusions in the figures that I am looking at. So overall, using this method, I actually only spend about five to 10 minutes reading research articles, but I've covered the conclusion, what I need from the introduction and methods, and then I know the basic results that they're getting and the whys and context to those results from the discussion. Personally, I don't make a lot of notes on my papers and I do a lot more of creating notes within Zotero or Notion to be able to search for it later rather than just highlighting something, which I rarely ever come back to. I realize this is probably a really efficient system and not what a lot of people will teach you because they'll want to go deep in depth into every single paper, but honestly, that always tends to be a waste of time for me. So if you want to work on this even faster and you want to learn how to automatically summarize your research articles using AI, you can check out a video on ScholarC up here that will provide a long form summary or a video on Paper Digest right here that will provide a shorter summary. If you found this video helpful, click the like button below. If you're interested in more content on how to do your research efficiently, subscribe to my channel.